Hi. Um, before I start, uh, I'd like to point out this uh, excellent fashionable shirt I'm wearing, uh, available from uh, John up there at the back uh, after the meeting for a modest sum. Um, you can be guaranteed to be the coolest kid on the block. So uh, here we go for the sky this month. What we have on the agenda tonight, uh, the big picture, the planets, the moon, a mission nebula because I like talking about deep sky stuff, comets and meteors, obviously a variable star. Uh, Blake isn't here, so uh, I'm just going to delete that entire double star for Blake's slide. <laughs> and uh, whatever's coming up in space flight for the next uh, month. So the big picture, here we go. This is what the sky looks like tonight, more or less at sunset. We've got uh, a parade of planets uh, heading off to uh, the horizon there. Uh, Venus, uh, Jupiter, the moon, obviously. Uh, Ceres, if you've got a good pair of binoculars or a small telescope. Uh, we can see uh, Ursa Major and uh, Bote's uh, sliding down into dusk. Okay, here we go. Venus, the Moon, Jupiter. Now uh, we can see uh, uh, Scorpius down there in the south. If we stay up uh, all night and see what we can see in the morning, then we've got uh, more planets. We've got Saturn, Mars, Neptune, Uranus got uh, Sagittarius and uh, all the rest of our uh, um, ecliptic uh, equi constellations coming along there. We're past the, uh, the summer solstice, so the nights are getting a bit longer. It's uh, bad news for days at the beach, but good news for us. We get to uh, get a bit more astronomy in at night. Um, this week, uh, twilight starting pretty close to finishing pretty close to 11 and uh, starting up just a bit after 3 in the morning. So, you know, a solid four hours of observing. Um, by the next meeting, it'll be an hour earlier in the evening and just about an hour later in the morning. So, get uh, up to six hours of observing then. Important dates coming up. Uh, the new moon on August 11th. Um, also notice right there, beside the new moon, we also have the Perseid meteors coming on August 13th, nice and close together. There is an eclipse of the moon coming up on July 27th. Um, as usual for these things, it's on the wrong side of the Earth. But uh, since we're being broadcast over the internet here, I'm going to uh, point it out anyway. Um, it's possible some of our viewers somewhere are going to be in position to see it or some of us will be traveling and be able to uh, get a glimpse of it. Um, July 27th, uh, the moon is as far as away as it's going to get, as close again on August 10th. Uh, because we have new people here, I'll point out what I always point out. It's a fun uh, project to take a picture of the moon at uh, both of these times, and then compare the size of the two. You can see how much closer and further away the moon gets. Uh, July 31st, uh, Mars will be at its closest. Um, August 11th, we get another partial solar eclipse. And once again, this year being what it is, uh, it's nowhere around here. But if you're traveling, it'd be a, a thing to worth, worth looking for. I wouldn't travel to see it, but if you're there, worth having a look for it. And uh, now that we're in the middle of the summer, uh, now is when all the big star parties come along. Um, I know Starfest up at uh, Mount Forest is uh, the big one around here, but there's a lot of other ones, mostly listed in the back of your observer's handbook. If you want to have a look there, I recommend uh, everybody go to at least one star party in their life. It's a worthwhile experience. So, the moon, uh, first quarter, in a couple days, um, full moon, July 27th, good time to get out of town, do something else. Uh, last quarter, August 4th, and the new moon, August 11th, and that's going to be a big one uh, because of the meteor shower at the same time. 
Um, the next Lunar X will be 2.15 a.m. on July 20th. Um, I debated whether or not to include this uh, slide or not because everybody who's seen my presentation before has seen it, but fortunately we have some new people here. So the Lunar X is a uh, feature, it's an intersection between a couple of craters on the moon. And when the time and the light is exactly right, you get this uh, cool X showing up. Now, scientifically, it's not particularly interesting, but uh, it's a really cool thing to see. And it's also you know, a good incentive to get out with your binoculars or your telescope and actually go out there and take a look and try and find something while it's happening. And as long as you're out there, there are a million other things to see in the night sky. So the planets, you've got uh, Mercury and Venus uh, just after sunset. Right now, Mercury is uh, it's very close to uh, setting uh, after the sun. It is still feasible to see it. Um, you need a good horizon. Uh, you need good seeing. Um, you know, hopefully no clouds, but uh, you know it can be glimpsed with a with a the naked eye if you're very lucky. Um, Venus. You can't miss it. It's the bright thing in the uh, western sky. Um, you'll look to the west and you'll say, that's got to be Venus, and you'll be right. It's no mistaking it for anything else. Look at it with a small telescope, and you'll see it's a half Venus. Uh, it looks like a half moon, only it's a planet. And over the next month, it will be growing bigger as it approaches us. In the morning, we get uh, the big, uh, the big show of uh, Mars, Neptune, and Uranus. Uh, Mars is at its biggest since 2003. I don't know if anybody remembers how impressive it was then. It wasn't really as big as the full moon, but it it was a big thing in the telescope. Um, the uh, July 31st, uh, the disk is going to be uh, 24 and a bit uh, arc seconds across. Which is which is pretty big. Um, you want a telescope to see it, of course, but uh, you know any kind of telescope. In theory, you should be able to see some features, some of the uh, big dark markings, the polar caps. In practice, I was uh, looking at uh, Mars last weekend, and it was just a big dusty mess. It's a giant dust storm season on Mars right now. Uh, hopefully, the dust storms will pass sometime before this uh, this great. Uh, Viewing opportunity goes past us, but uh, you know, our hobby being what it is, uh, no guarantees. <coughs> now, as well as uh, looking for all the features on Mars, um, I know everyone's going to be uh, complaining because they're not going to see anything through the dust. There is also the option of uh, looking for the Mars moons, uh, Phobos and Deimos. Um, somebody on the mailing list uh, got a photo of it uh, a couple weeks ago and posted it on Facebook, and I don't remember who it was now, and I'm sorry about that, but it was a, a pretty impressive achievement. Um, they'd seen it visually by getting an eyepiece with an occulting bar through the middle to block out the light of uh, Mars. Uh, you can also do it by setting up your telescope beside a building or a post or something that's going to block the light of Mars. And if you're careful, you'll get the uh, one of the moons uh, creeping out uh, before Mars shows up in your viewfinder. Uh, I haven't done it myself. It's on my list of things. Uh, it hasn't worked any time I've tried it, but uh, other people have succeeded, so it is a doable thing. So in the middle of the night, we've got the, the big planets, uh, Saturn, Jupiter. Um, Jupiter's the really amazing thing to look at after sunset. It's pretty close. Um, we've got the big, the great red spot there. Now, last year, I was reading that the great red spot may be disappearing forever. And I was suggesting that people you know, keep an eye on it. You know, this could be a scientifically interesting thing. Now, last time I was looking, which was last weekend, the Red spot was redder and uh, more obvious than I'd seen it in years. So, you know, 
scientific predictions are not always uh, what they're cracked up to be. In any case, I would say, you know, get out there and look for it. Um, if you're lucky, you'll see a, a prominent red spot, which is always interesting. And if you see it fading away, then you'll be answering that interesting science, scientific question. Uh, Saturn is rising in the evening. Um, it's always a good show. Um, it's The rings are not open at the maximum, but they're good and wide open. And there are lots of moons around it you can see and identify with any kind of planetarium software. Um, Titan is obvious, it's the, the big moon, but there's at least half a dozen others that can be seen with a modest telescope. Pluto, I know it's not a planet, <laughs> is in Sagittarius, and that makes it really tough to find. Um, I don't think I'd even attempt to do it visually. There are so many uh, small stars which are, are easily confused with uh, Pluto, but it would be an interesting photographic uh, target, especially if you can get uh, multiple nights of observation, so you can compare one night to the next and see how the uh, see if you can spot it moving. Ceres, it's uh, close to Venus around now. Um, it's uh, not really much to look at, except for the fact that it is a dwarf planet that you can see and uh, you know, knock it off your checklist. Sadly, all these objects are pretty low in the, uh, towards the horizon from where we live, so they're not going to be amazing photographic targets. But uh, they should be at least interesting visual ones. And yes, it can be done. Um, Mercury is the tricky one. Uh, I saw it last weekend at the, uh, the CAO, and after that, it's just a matter of uh, staying up till 2 or 2 or 30 in the morning. A pair of binoculars is all you need. Remember to look down and count the Earth. And after Mercury, they're all pretty easy. So, um, I always like to uh, suggest some deep sky stuff for people to look at, since we have some... Uh, some new people here, they may not have seen uh, these guys. Emission nebula are the clouds of gas in, uh, in space that, uh, that glow red as they're uh, illuminated by, uh, by stars within them. Um, M8 and M20 in Sagittarius. Uh, the North America nebula in Cygnus is good. You can see that with binoculars. I've probably saw it uh, 50 times before I realized what I was looking at. I thought it was just a... You know, unclean optics, but uh, it turned out I'd been seeing it. Um, M17, the Swan Nebula, or the Omega Nebula, looks more like a duck to me. These are all good targets for binoculars or uh, small telescopes. They're not great for looking at in the city, um, but uh, if you have any kind of nebula filter, that will help out. Uh, my best advice is uh, get out to a star party, even one of the, uh, the small ones we have here at uh, Bayview Village Park. Unless you're the guy who brings the biggest telescope, you can always uh, borrow a bigger one and have a look at it, which uh, makes it worth the effort to go out. My sa favorite summer deep sky object is uh, the Trifid Nebula. It's one I always go to whenever I'm out observing. Um, that, it's a good one because you can you know, check off most of your list at once. It's an emission nebula, a reflection nebula, dark nebula, and a star cluster all rolled into one object. If you're uh, having a look at it and you've got a nebula filter, you can try with and without and see which part of the, uh, the object appears and disappears to tell you which is, which is glowing and which has just got light bouncing off it. The dark nebula is uh, Barnard 85. The uh, kind of uh, propeller-shaped thing in the middle there. And uh, if you're interested in uh, crossing things off in your observer's handbook, that's on the list of uh, dark nebula included in the deep sky section. So comets and meteors. Obviously, the big one is the Perseids uh, peaking on the morning of August 13th. And this year, it is perfectly set for the new moon. So we're going to see, you know, we're going to see all of them. Everything down to, anything the human eye can see, we'll be seeing. 
which probably means we'll be seeing clouds, but uh, you know, that's, that's what our hobby is all about. That's an excellent question. Sunday night, Monday morning? Okay. We can all take Monday off work, call in sick, right? I will. We also have the, uh, the South Delta Aquarids around July 29th, but uh, it's a much uh, less interesting uh, shower. It's around the full moon. I would say it's probably a good target to try uh, picking up uh, with a radio, looking for reflections off uh, the ionosphere. But uh, I'm not sure I'm going to uh, bother heading out in the night to uh, try and see that one. I've got a couple of good comments coming up. Uh, 21P uh, Jacobini Zinner. Uh, right now it's in Cepheus. I think it's about uh, 12th magnitude, but uh, they're promising uh, as it gets close to the sun, it could reach uh, naked eye brightness, maybe. Uh, C2017 S3 pan stars, right now is about 10th uh, magnitude in Camelopardalis. It's predicted to have a maximum of uh, around 7.5 in late August. And as always with uh, comets, uh, no promises. If we're lucky, we'll get a big outburst and it'll be even better. If history is a guide, it'll be worse. I kind of feel that uh, when I'm telling you about comets, I should be wearing a mask or something so that it, uh, as I'm being recorded here, no one's going to hold this against me in a month's time when they fizzled out. Now, we can't uh, go a month without a uh, variable star. Uh, CI Cygni is one I've been working on. Um, it's a Z Andromedae type uh, symbiotic variable. Uh, what that means is we have a red giant and a small main sequence star, which may have an accretion disk around it orbiting each other. It's also possible that the red giant is so big that the, uh, the small star is actually orbiting within its atmosphere at times. So every now and then, every couple years, this one goes from about 12th magnitude to 10th magnitude or even brighter. The interesting thing about it is, it happens very fast, which means the uh, automated uh, uh, telescopes aren't necessarily going to catch it during the interesting outburst phase, which makes it a good target for amateur observers like you and I. So I would go to the AAVSO website, aavso.org, uh, track down this star, sign up as an observer, print out some charts, and uh, keep an eye out for it. Um, you know, this is a uh, useful science that uh, amateurs like us can do. Yeah. Usually it's around 12th to 13th magnitude um, when, it's not, uh, when it's not an outburst. It happens fast. It can happen, go from quiescence to full outburst in under 12 hours. So that's too fast for the, uh, the programs that take a picture every day or every three days. That will depend on us. Now, I know Blake's not here, but uh, you're going to get an interesting double star anyway on his behalf. Well, he's watching. Is he watching? Yeah. Okay. There you go, Blake. I didn't forget you. Um, one I picked this time is uh, Tau Cygni, um, a 3.8 and 6.6 .6 magnitude pair. The small one's actually pretty much like the sun. Uh, the other's uh, obviously a much bigger the giant. Um, these ones are very close, uh, less than one arc second separation. So you need uh, a five inch or better telescope, you need good seeing, you need to clean your eyepieces before you set up. But uh, the interesting thing about these guys is the period, 49.6 years. That means within a month or two, you'll be able to actually see motion, you see it move a few degrees around its uh, orbit. So if you're looking for real fast action in the night sky, uh, this is the double star for you. So spaceflight coming up. 
Um, Falcon launches. Okay, I gotta admit, I'm, I don't watch the launches anymore for the launches. They're, they're getting boring for me. I don't watch unless they're gonna guarantee an attempt to land the booster. I still think that's cool. So I've pointed out the, uh, the scheduled Falcon launches coming up. Um, the Parker Solar Probe is uh, due for launch. Um, it's actually going to pass through the outer atmosphere of the sun. So that's going to be uh, some cool science. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, from now to August 11th, the ISS is going to be passing over every night. Uh, heavensabove.com for actual time and uh, location. It's Because it's so close, it's going to depend on where you are, so I'm not going to predict anything here. And the other big telescope, uh, spaceflight news is uh, the James Webb Telescope has been delayed till 2021. So hopefully they can keep the, uh, the Hubble flying for just a bit longer. And that's what we have.